This trip has been a real surprise. In many ways, it was exactly what the I Ching foretold. But in some other ways, it was a real surprise. <laughs> a lot of unexpected things. A lot of really good unexpected things happened. So what I want to talk about here is the realization that actually all spiritual paths are shamanic. They all use tapasya of some kind or other. And tapasya means intentional suffering. Taking only vegetarian diet, rising early in the morning, taking cold bath, you know, in some cases becoming a renunciant, or doing so many rituals and prayers and mantras. These are all tapasya. Tapasya. But they're a little bit different from the way of the shaman. You see, the way that spiritual truth becomes degraded and devolves from its high, high origins is that it slowly changes <laughs> from the original to a symbol. So what is the real thing? It's the shaman, the sadhu the renunciant sitting in his cave doing austerities, tapasya, intentional suffering, giving up so many things, studying so many things, doing so many practices and so on. Sometimes they intentionally uh, remain silent for years at a time or in solitude. But the difference between tapasya and actual shamanic ritual, shamanic ordeal, is that in shamanism, in pure shamanism, which I'm going to identify with the Ajatavada, you'll see this video is classified, Ajata. Why? Because the true shaman does not get his ordeals, his tapasya, out of a book. He gets it from deep inner guidance, intuition, realization, direct communication with the goddess within. The goddess is not in books. She's not in temples and statues. She's not in prayers and mantras and rituals. She is here before us and within us every moment. Do you think she doesn't know what we're thinking, what we're doing? She knows us better than we know ourselves. So when we approach her, not some book, not some temple, not some guru, not some sect, not some tradition, but the actual living goddess. She gives the correct advice. That's why I Ching is so powerful. In I Ching, we shake the coins and throw them. You saw it in the video recently? It's apparently chance, quote unquote whether we get heads or tails, yin or yang. But actually, it's not chance. Chance is just 
the idea of chance, the idea of statistical calculation in general, is simply a fancy way of science or mathematics to say, we don't know. We don't know what's really going on. So we take a big sample of a certain phenomenon, and then we characterize it statistically, mathematically. <laughs> Most of the time it does this, but sometimes it does something else. <laughs> How often? Well, if we look at a million paths, a million trials, a million experiments, we can make some approximation. So this is what science has devolved into. Instead of actually knowing, simply making guesses based on chance. You see, that's why the scientists say that the universe is created by a process of chance, because they don't know. <laughs> but we know. And it's not chance. It's the creative potency of the goddess. And we can know that goddess. We can know that creative potency directly, firsthand, intimately, personally, on a personal, individual level. Directly. How? Because the goddess is consciousness. And if we are conscious, if we have consciousness, then we're in touch with her. The most intimate touch in real time. So we may use some uh, metaphor, some oracle, like the I Ching, or we may use some other method to put ourselves in trance, mantras, or fasting, or sacred plants, or whatever, or deals. Ordeals means we take on discomfort, inconvenience, difficulty, pain, deliberately, in order to reach a higher energy state where we have better wisdom, better intuition, deeper knowledge than we have in our ordinary state. And why is that knowledge so much better? Because in the ordinary state, Jagrat consciousness, we think the world is real. We think the body is the self. We think that symbolic things like scriptures, which are just metaphors, poetry, very nice poetry, but still only a symbol. We think that's real knowledge. No, that's not real knowledge. That's sort of generally pointing in the, in the general direction of real knowledge, more or less, provided that we don't mistake it for real knowledge, but follow the pointer until we experience actual real knowledge. And that happens through austerity, through tapasya, through ordeals. So what has happened? The degeneration of religion or of spiritual realization into religion is that the symbol has become preferred over the reality. People will accept a scripture talking about things and people that happened a long time ago and far away. But people would not accept the same thing if it happened right here, right now, today. What about, for example, the Pandavas? All married, one wife, Draupadi. Where in the world today could you get away with that? Or what about the Native American sun dance? I'm not going to insult your intelligence by describing the whole thing, but it's a physical austerity a physical ordeal. I went through that ordeal when I was accepted as an apprentice to one of the shamans in the tribe, in the Navajo, Lakota, 
tribe. So, this is real knowledge. When you experience something so powerful that it unmoors you, it knocks your socks off, it blows your mind, it overwhelms all of your dependence upon, identification with, abstractions, symbols, metaphors of the truth. And it forces you to confront the actual truth without anything in between. That's an ordeal. And very many different various means are used in very different, different tribal and shamanic and traditional cultures all over the world. But the one thing that's common to all the cultures in the world today is the trend to take the actuality of spiritual life and then turn it into a symbol and expect people to accept it as the same thing. But it's not the same thing. It can never be the same thing. When Lao Tzu decided to retire and go to the mountains, he rode out of China on a water buffalo, facing backwards. In other words, let the water buffalo go wherever it wants. I know because water buffaloes like the valleys that this buffalo, she'll take me to a good place. And there I can do my practices. There I can leave my body in peace. Nobody's going to disturb me. So when it became known that he was leaving, the emperor sent a messenger ahead of him, a runner. And at the last gate, at the border of China, the empire of China, the gatekeeper stopped Lao Tzu. And he said, you have to write your realization for the benefit of all to come, for all time. So Lao Tzu was a good China citizen. He said, okay. So <laughs> the first thing he wrote was, the truth cannot be written in words. Those who know do not speak. Those who speak do not know. So the real shamanic practice, the ordeal, that leads to direct realization of the truth is not very popular today. In fact, it's often prohibited even against the law to do this kind of tapasya, these kind of ordeals. But people still do it anyway because they know it works. But in most civilized, so-called civilized countries, you cannot openly do shamanic tapasya shamanic ordeals. And that's maybe a good thing. Because when you're in the middle of one of these things, it doesn't present very nicely. You can be ecstatic on the inside, and on the outside you look like a mess. <laughs> maybe you're, you're crying, you're rolling around on the floor, you're hysterical, you know, you can't even speak properly but you have contacted a wisdom that is higher than words. So it's best to do these kind of practices in solitude. And that's what I'm planning to do. When I get back to Tiruvannamalai, I'm not going to see anybody, but I'm going to break out all my old gear and I'm going to do the shamanic practices that I know that work for me. 
and I'm going to satisfy myself, and I'm not going to share them here. I can't. I can't. It just it wouldn't work. So, this is the other thing. One cannot do these practices in a group. One cannot be part of a community. One cannot take knowledge from outside, from a book, from a teacher, from classes, from a temple, from a deity, from words in general, or from activities, external activities. One must go deep within, and this can only happen in solitude. So the people who create, propagate, promote, or join spiritual groups are all going off the way. They're accepting the symbol as the real thing. And they're missing the actual spiritual knowledge within themselves. Goddess can manifest and communicate anywhere to anyone. And a lot of it ha happens in dreams. I've been practicing lucid dreaming for a long time now. And especially the dreams just before you awaken in the morning are very meaningful, very profound. But lately the dreams I've been having are simply not describable in words. Yet there is a sense of reality and knowledge there. I can't deny it. So what I'm saying is you have to use the shamanic principle, the ordeal or the tapasya to get beyond words and symbols. Then you have a chance. Then you can contact truth directly. And is it going to hurt? Yeah, it's going to hurt. It's going to hurt a lot if you really do it. The sun dance, my God, so powerful. We discussed that a little bit in my series called Secret Heaven, which you should definitely watch. So, tomorrow morning I'm leaving Kodai Kanal and going down the hill. And by tomorrow night I'll be home. And I have a whole huge list of stuff to do. <laughs> because I found the knowledge that I was looking for outside within my own self. Now I know what to do. And it's what I've always known. See, this is why this is a Jatavada. I've always known what to do and how to do it. And I've always known since I was very young what I really wanted. And for a long time I got misled and I was wandering around expecting or, or desiring somebody else to do it to me, to do it for me. That's why you're here. That's why you're watching this. You think I'm going to give you the secret. <laughs> No, I can just point you in the general direction of the secret. You have to find it for yourself. That's the only way that works. It's the hard way. It's painful. You have to go deep within. You have to do austerities. And the more austerities you do, the more painful they are, the more wisdom you will get as a result. That's the deal. Aum Tatsat, Aum Shakti Aum.